Our next speaker is a founder of an organization that aims to connect the top woman software engineer from Syria with the Belgian job market called Syrian Women in Tech, presenting on sexism. Please welcome Leila Deeb. So as I work in uh, software engineering and in technology, I want to start with a nice example on how technology can shape our life and how it can change our future. I'm sure you've all heard about the metaverse. The metaverse is a virtual realm or a world where people can choose their own avatars, choose what they want to wear, for example, and go into this virtual reality. They can log in via a headset or their computers they can create events, for example. They can um, do an event or create a house or do a farm or whatever they want in that world. A lot of companies are investing in that at the moment. And Facebook last year committed to, deliver, to delivering a metaverse. And they wanted to call it Horizon Worlds. One second. <laughs> they wanted to call it Horizon Worlds. So they released it, I think, a couple of months ago at the end of last year. And they allowed people to log in, in there and test how it feels like. We call it beta testing. So after testing, people log in to there. Something disturbing happened. One woman reported that only after 60 seconds of her entering the metaverse, she was sexually harassed by a group of men. Only after 60 seconds of her entering the metaverse. Now the metaverse, or that world, mimics our reality. Because when we go there, we do our own actions, what we do normally in our lives. And some of you think, OK, why sexism or why this harassment is happening there on this virtual reality? Well, it mimics our reality. So this is the problem that still happens in our reality. Now let's go back a bit and define first what is sexism, and let's give some examples about it. So sexism, according to Cambridge, is the belief that members of one sex are less intelligent, able, skillful than the members of the other sex, especially that women are less able than men. Sexism is harmful. It gives the women, or the people who are victim of sexism, it gives them feeling of worthlessness. Feel, sorry, it gives them a feeling of self, less self-esteem uh, with this when they're facing sexism. It starts at homes when we tell the girls that they should take care of their beauty. When we call them, "Oh, you're beautiful," and when we call the boys, "You're smart." This is how it starts at home. When we, for example put them in boxes for kids. When we tell the boys, encourage them to go to be athletes, go run, and we encourage the girls more to go into cooking maybe, or this kind of things that are considered girly or ladylike behavior. It also, it starts at school. For example, there are some statistics that shows that 37% of girls being sexually harassed while at school, or they're subjected to unwanted touching. In the UK itself, 66% of 16 to 18 years old girls experienced or witnessed the use of sexist language at school. Of course, not to mention the gender stereotyping at schools, where, for example, it's unconscious by maybe teachers or other people, where we tell the boys, OK, maybe help me moving a desk or something to to tell that, for example, this emphasizes that boys are strong, while for girls, if we want to help in something more simple. Or sometimes you find less girls going into athletes or playing soccer or any athlete activities. It also exists on social media. And I think we're all bombarded with messages from social media. We see ads, for example, objectifying women, and we think it's normal. We're all bombarded with this information. A lot of comments on social media of women are on how they look like. And we don't talk about the topics that we're talking about. We just comment on how they look like. It also exists in the workplace, where women 
get sometimes paid less 30% than men in the same position. Sometimes they're penalized for having a family when they go, for example, on maternity leave, when they come back to the market, they find their colleagues being, for example, taken more higher roles, and then they're penalized in the same role, and they're not encouraged to advance in their careers. Now, let's get into some numbers to see how it affects. 80% of women stated that they have been confronted with the phenomena of mansplaining and interrupting. Until 2003, test dummies for, for cars, they have been formed as a man shape, not as a woman shape. Artificial hearts fits only, eight, uh, fits only 20 percent of women, while they fit 85 percent of men's hearts. And of course, popular apps make you pay more if you have a woman's avatar. Another fun statistics, pink products are more expensive than other products. For example, if something targeted for women, if it's pink, pink washed, let's call it, then it's more expensive than the same product that it's not in pink. 60.5 Nobel Prizes are given to women, only 6.5%, and mostly in literature and peace, because you know, more women are on these topics, considered to go more on these topics. And only 26% of CEOs are women. So we see with the statistics that it's not good. These numbers has been the same for the last 50 or 25 years. Now, sometimes, like, especially after we see these numbers, we see why we don't feel it. Like sometimes it's just everywhere. Why we don't sense it? Why sometimes we feel like we're privileged and we don't feel this sexism? Actually, it's because of this unconscious bias. Let me give you an example. Unfortunately, with the latest events in Ukraine, for example, people now are walking on the streets, but they don't feel safety. At, at any second, something might attack them or someone might attack them, and they might get killed, for example, or injured. If they haven't talked about it, we, we, don't, we wouldn't know that feeling. You wouldn't know the feeling of walking in the street feeling not safe. Or for example, last week, the shootings in the US at the school, you cannot imagine how the parents felt or how they're feeling every week or every day sending their kids to school, even the kids themselves. And this is because we have this, we have this privilege that we don't know how it feels. We cannot say that these people in Ukraine or the, the people from the school in the US, that they're overrating or they're talking about that problem. It doesn't mean that if we don't feel it, that it doesn't exist. And same for sexism. If it's, if it's there, if people are saying we're encountered with sexism, where we cannot say, no, you're overrating, or you're, you don't know what you're talking about, or it's just a joke, we cannot say that because it's real, even if we don't feel it, even if we're not subject to it. And sometimes it's, it's even worse that sexism is so normal, women are ob uh, objective, uh, subjected to this sexism, that they don't feel it anymore. It becomes very normal to them. For example, catcalling on the streets becomes very normal. Seeing um, or objectifying women in ads or video games is just considered normal. Uh, being afraid of walking on the street alone is just normal. It's okay, you're a girl, it's okay that you're scared to walk on the street. Also, being victimized or blamed if something happened to you uh, people would tell you, oh, maybe how, how much did you drink? Or maybe you weren't, uh, you, you weren't wearing something appropriate? Or maybe you were asking for it? It just becomes normal to hear this kind of responses of these cases. And this is one of the, first, the worst results of sexism. But also, we talked how sexism affects women. It also affects men. You see, let's go back a bit to the gender stereotyping and the boxes. Men as well, sometimes they're blamed or shamed for showing their feelings as well, and that's the result of sexism. Also, they're, sometimes you feel like they're put in box that they have to be successful, they have to be the providers and fighters, and that puts them also in boxes, so they're also um, a victim of sexism. Look, for example, at uh, Johnny Depp's uh, trial in the last, uh, the last weeks, 
And at the beginning, when Amber Heard tweeted that she was um, assaulted or beaten by Johnny Depp, no one, no one believed, believed him. And everyone said he's, uh, he, um, he's accused of that, he did it, he lost a lot of roles in the movies, um, his reputation was ruined. But now with the facts, we see that that's not the truth. That's not what happened. But also because of this gender stereotyp uh, stereotyping, we already tend to stand with or vision the woman as a victim and the man as attacking on her. So men sometimes can also be a victim of uh, sexism. Another thing of uh, men being affected by sexism, first I want to say something. Not all men are sexist. There's a small percentage of men that are sexist, but they're doing a lot of damage and catastrophic damage to the relations between men and women, between boys and girls. For example, let's say you're a nice, well-rounded guy and you want to approach a woman at school or, I don't know, in the playground or in a bar. Sometimes you go there and you ask, like, hi, can, we, uh, can, can I introduce myself or something? And then she shuts down. Just to tell you, it's not your problem, it's not the guy's problem, it's just the, the history or the accumulated things that the girl has seen and experienced. And women are not hostile towards men by nature, it's just because of all the experiences. So it also affects men. Sexism not only affects men and women, it affects the whole human race and the whole evolution of this human race. Let's talk, for example, in technology and artificial intelligence. For example, how we innovate. Most of the people who are innovating are men, which leads to different results. Doesn't suit women, for example. Let's go back to the um, uh, crash dummies that they use in testing for the airbags. There are some results that have been done on uh, the airbags, and it shows women are 47% more likely to be seriously injured and 17% more likely to die than a man at the same accident. Because when they designed the airbags, they forgot that women have breasts and women might be pregnant. And because all men did, it, did this data, did these studies. Also, for example, if you notice, when you have your digital assistants, uh, Alexa or uh, Siri, they're all women voices. So this is promoting in your, in your head that women are nurturing and they're just there to respond to commands. Yeah. <laughs> and also AI can be biased if, it's, if it was fed with biased data. So we need to make sure, and this is, there's a lot of regulations in the EU, in the parliament, to make sure that the AI is not bias because it might be catastrophic the results because AI now is everywhere around us and it's leading our innovation it's in our computer laptops everywhere we see so if it's bias it means we will have catastrophic results that are against the woman with this AI applications anywhere we use it now we talked about the problems what can we do how can we change that how we can overcome this problem I'm not going to pretend that I have a solution for sexism. It has been for a long time, but there are some things that we can do and some things that, have, that are being done at the moment. First, there's a lot of talk about this topic. So one of the important things is to raise awareness. Talk about it, like what we're doing now. In, in different institutions, for example, different schools, just to raise awareness. That's one thing that we can do. Also at home, try with your nephews, uh, with, the, with the little boys and girls that you know, try, for example, when you give them a gift, try to be more creative, not give a truck for the boy and a kit, little kitchen or a Barbie for the girl. Try to encourage them to, to be different things, to be whatever they want in their life. For me, when I, when I was in high school, I think that was 15 years ago, that was a bit different society, I wanted to study software engineering. And it wasn't a normal thing to study software engineering at that time. Uh, everyone wanted, oh yeah, maybe you should go into pharmaceutical, for example, that also, that mostly suits the girl, or go into, um, um, I don't know, uh, teaching or something that suits girls more. But I stood against it. I said, I want to study software engineering. So, because, and you know why I studied software engineering? Because I saw Angelina Jolie in a movie coding. And that, that was a role model for me. 
And this is also a very big thing, is the importance of role models, the ones that we see in our books, programs. We should, for example, review our school books and programs and try to focus more on the history of women. The first programmer was a woman, Ada Lovells. There's a lot of scientists around there. We should talk more about them. We should make sure that we don't stereotype the people um, in books, show the woman cooking and the man working. We should have more diversity, show more women athletes, show more women doctors, politicians, leaders, CEOs of companies, doing more things because this is a role model. We see it, we get some ideas, girls or, or guys, and they, this affects their choices in the future. Another thing that we can do is with social media. Make sure that there's diversity in social media. Having panels, for example, with men and women. Uh, making sure that we try to not objectify women in every song that we see, every video clip, every lyrics of songs. Sometimes it's really out there. Maybe we try not to listen to that songs. I don't know, it's hard because they have a catchy rhythm. I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're not good. They're emphasizing these stereotypical uh, the gender stereotyping things that we have in our mind. Another thing that we can do, for example, on a daily basis is just be aware of the words that we speak. Pay attention, be considerate. Encourage maybe women or men to speak up. If a woman, and for every woman in here, even for, for a man or a guy or a, or a girl, if they feel that someone is talking to them or something is you feel like this is not me this is this is wrong like someone tells you oh you shouldn't be here in this class this is a football class or a soccer class or something try to speak up talk about it there's no shame in that in that in talking about it also as try to be considerate put yourself in the other person's shoes and understand where this is coming from don't under underestimate the problem and point it out and talk about it. Be an ambassador about this sexism problem and try to raise awareness about it because raise awareness, raising awareness is the first step of solving the problem. And as the new generation, I think you're the future. If you can, I mean, if you can solve or end sexism, we'll be super happy, but we count on you to change the world a bit and deliver it less sexism for the new generation. Thank you. Thank you.